So many years ago, I was part of this writer's group that met weekly in some library section or some other places, to be honest. In either case, we met, and it never really got into my head that it was a Christian writer's group. It was filled with people that were writing for Christian readers, and I was writing it as just basic, basic writer's group. And, you know, that sort of got conflicted, because I like to write sort of racy stuff. Granted, I don't consider swearing racy or talking about poop. Racy. Granted, I don't know if I did that, but equivalent. You anyway, guys had this little write-out here that was given to us to guidelines of the writer's group that we should have. Generally, any type of fiction or non-fiction, short fiction, children's or young adult writing, poetry, songs, articles, and so forth will be accepted for critique. Critique, sorry. If they refrain from the following, anything that is offensive to God, profanity, blue humor, distasteful language, or explicit details of bodily functions, i.e. potty talk, sex, etc., Pushing or criticizing other religions. Any member who fails to uphold to these guidelines will be banned from the group until there is an repentant heart. Alright, so cutting off Moses' penis is okay, but we can't talk about farts. That's great. And why wouldn't you want to, like, criticize religion or, like, push somebody to think differently? That's a good thing. Evolving. But I guess evolution is sort of a, not a accepted. <laughs> I sure as hell wasn't a repentant. We are called to be, sal to be salt and light in the world. For this reason, we encourage secular writing as well as Christian writing. However, all writing must come from a Christian perspective and belief in the Holy Bible as the inspired word of God. Well, really, why wouldn't you want another perspective? Why does it have to be that perspective? If you're just getting in that perspective, no, people are going to know what to expect. Throw something at them. Make them excited. Make them want to read what you have. Our group is also for general discussion on the tribulations and trials of writing, i.e., how do I overcome writer's block, encouragement, area announcements, mar market discussions, and etc. And of course, we have a little note here at the bottom that says you can go to some place at Rocky or Coco's that meets every two weeks or so, but apparently I liked where I was, and I didn't, really shouldn't have been there. Ooh. We have another sheet here that came with it. Make the ending satisfying. This is given by the same guy who liked to be the head of the group. Your character's worst faults propels him to the black moment. His greatest strength powers him to overcome. Number two, resolve all the conflicts. Leave no loose, th loose threads. Number three, the ending must be consistent with beginning and tone and purpose. Number four, the character chooses what is right over what he, she wants, then wins it all. Number five, no cavalry saves. Number six, fulfill the promise of the beginning. Number seven, Omit unnecessary details. Eight. Keep the pacing strong, but don't rush it. And nine. Show your protagonist epiphanies. That's right. I can't even read. Now, of course, all this stuff can be disregarded in, in all writing in general. Why shouldn't the protagonist fail and not get the ending he deserves? He probably doesn't deserve it. Why should it be good? Why should it be uplifted? Why should all threads be coming together? Just write. Make an interesting story. That's the way I saw it. I always found this stuff very confining. I'm sort of glad I'm out of it. Of course, I haven't written in a while, so... Yeah. Not much progress there.